we've been working with machines in the workplace for decades, and some of them do amazing things. But it seems like they're still a little short of feeling magical to do tasks that we're all uh, confronted with every day. You know, the, the marketing team being able to understand what the engineering team was talking about about the last feature release without bothering an engineer. Or the engineering team being able to understand if the last sales meeting is actually a list of specs and requirements or just a number of wish list items that uh, clients or prospects who still believe in Santa Claus were listing out. Or even just the ability for each and every member of a team to understand what the CEO just said about the five-year vision and how that translates to what they should focus on next week. And it seems like those may be changing right now, which is exciting. I'm the co-founder of Dust, a company that was born with and is built around this latest generation of artificial intelligence models focused on generating uh, large language models in particular. And what has gotten us at Dust incredibly excited is the ability to split up and refactor information as it flows within a team, within a company, and make it useful on the fly for those who have to accelerate the pace at which the team is making decisions or pushing product forward. So that's what we're excited about. And without further ado, I'll give you a quick demo of some of the features of Dust. I'm going to talk about myself as the founder of the company and the admin of the workspace. And I'll also introduce you to our newest employee. Her name is Dora. She's just joined the team, and she's excited to get started. So um, Dora's at Dust. And she's wondering how she can use Dust, which seems to be running about the team. So one of the first things that I feel we really need to focus on with these powerful models is the experience and application layer that everybody here is going to be confronted with. We have these amazing tools, but they don't always behave in a way that's predictable or easy to understand. So making them usable day to day is going to be one of the main factors that accelerates deployment of this technology across the workspace. That helper, how can I use the assistant? And helper here has been configured by Dust. It integrates some of the information about the company. It also integrates the tone of voice of the company. And it understands that Dora's recently joined and that she may need quite detailed information. Of course, I'll try to provide references from the data sources that are there. What we're really focused on is bringing the power and potential of these large language models that are very good at general things with the custom, bespoke, sometimes sensitive set of data that companies want to make use of every day. Um, Dora's got some information. She's quite excited. She's now going to try and use some raw models that she's heard about but hasn't had an opportunity to use. Now, I know some of you here and maybe many even at Stripe are excited to actually know which of GPT-4 and Claude work better. And I'm talking about the models, not the companies. Um, but one of the things that we're excited about is comparing them and just getting for the same question, hey, what are some facts about Station F? To try and see how these models behave and actually embrace the fact that they are going to behave in different ways about different topics, about different use cases. We really believe that it's by actually training yourself and relearning how to work with machines that some of the potential of these large language models can be unleashed. Now, of course, this information here in GPT-4 is still, still going on. There we go. Um, all right, at GPT-4, you are the longest. Tweet length, please. Um, all right, so of course, having access to the raw models is a really useful task. And we think that every team should be deploying generative AI in a safe way, in a way that's also easy to monitor and sometimes provide guardrails for by the security team. Because of course, what's going to be interesting is to now bring the company's data in. So hey, at Dust, now Dust is an assistant that actually knows about the company and all the data sources that have been authorized by the admin. Uh, what's our plan? for Stripe AI Day. All right, so it's now actually going to perform a retrieval augmented 
set of generation. Uh, it's obviously found information across multiple data sources. We currently support you know, Google Docs, Slack, Notion, GitHub, the usual software stack where information is currently dispersed. And it's trying to understand, all right, there we go. There's a demo, apparently 1 PM. And I did say that at the last rehearsal, I'd like the team to kind of freeze, stop deploying, or at least tell me if they were going to push stuff, which they haven't done. So hopefully, everything still works. Um, but it doesn't seem like there are any details about what we're actually going to pitch. And that's because I completely forgot to add some of the data about our brilliant idea to integrate uh, Dora the Explorer. So this is the document where I had this amazing idea to say, hey, we'll talk about Dora the Explorer and focus the demo on her. So what I should be doing now is actually just adding that data source in the scope of the assistant. And we're just going to reauth here and add the talks file where we have my brilliant idea for Stripe AI. Fingers crossed, we'll see how quickly it integrates. Um, now, back to D Dora. She's actually going to try and curtail the behavior of an assistant to her specific needs. And one of the things that she's excited about is getting feedback. She wants to get feedback and be able to store the feedback that she gets from her colleagues across the company, but also turn that feedback into an actionable set of exercises, something that she can really use to grow every day. So one of the builders of the workspace, it's me for the purposes of this demo, has actually gone and created a custom assistant for the workspace that's going to behave exactly that way. I'm just going to look at, I think I call it Feedback Fred. There you go. Feedback Fred is an assistant that's going to behave like an executive coach. It's going to use the data that's provided on some of the internal data sources where colleagues actually share feedback. But it is going to turn that feedback into a set of actionable exercises or things that can maybe be taken by Dora into her, uh, her own day-to-day -day experience. We've set some specific parameters around the underlying model and its behavior. We don't want Feedback Fred to go crazy, so we've actually lowered the temperature on this one for those who know what temperature is. But that could be an interesting way to see Feedback Fred evolve. And um, I'm going to go ahead and save that. Now, if Dora prompts Feedback Fred right now, there are no data sources. So Feedback Fred got some feedback. There we go. Oh, actually. I actually did add the data sources, so Feedback Fred is giving me some, some, some of that. The live demo is working very well. So these are some of the points that we actually did talk about with Fred that I was supposed to add after I first time prompted her. But I guess I'm getting the feedback right now. And uh, we could have a shorter version of that. So to wrap it up, what we're really excited about at Dust is not necessarily to build the biggest model or the best model right now. We think there'll be a time for that. But what we really think is going to block and slow down the at-scale deployment of these models in the workplace is bringing together in a way that's safe, understandable, and usable every day the power of these models and the data that everybody is dealing with day to day. Thank you very much. What would be the key difference with a product like Dashworks? Yeah, w one of the ways in which we've decided to really focus and build a product is with a specific persona in mind. Um, we don't necessarily think that developers are going to be the only people to unleash the power of these models within the workplace. So we've decided to focus on people that we call builders, uh, people who uh, don't always know how to code but really believe that they can bend software to their will and have been sometimes stuck. Um, all of the applications and the entire Dust application runs on our own platform which is an open source orchestration platform for large language models. So depending on how technical you are, you can go in and as deep as you need to really bend the behavior of the assistants to your exact specifications. And while we think it's really important to start very easily, we also believe that it's important to build on a platform that is extensible and composable in that way. I learned from a payments company that sometimes abstracting away some of the complexity can get you very, very far. Yeah. Thanks. Yep. Uh, do you have plans for uh, agents uh, or something that like do stuff? For example, uh, please uh, do an executive summary of all the meetings this week, uh, every Monday morning, something like that. Yeah, we do. And I think it touches upon a really important point of this entire technology wave. Um, we actually have some of the assistants do stuff pretty, uh, pretty precisely. Like they have a specific time window that's sort of pre-prompted on a specific set of behavior and preferences by the user. And we really believe in you know, turning on that, that following step. 
but, but you have to be really sure that the quality is good. Because I think people are going to judge the performance of these based on their everyday experience of them, not a huge website like help page that says, these are great, and sometimes they don't work, or like a pop-up that says, don't trust anything this product is going to tell you, but please go ahead and use it. So I think we're, you know, we feel a little short of de deploying agents and letting them run wild, but we're very excited about what people are trying to do, which is you know, have a machine take care of the mundane and focus on the most exciting part of your role. Do you rely on APIs? Yeah, we rely on APIs. Actually, I don't know if you saw on the first screen, we make the raw models available to those who want to use them. Like, I, I feel it's a bit of a pity for people not to even be able to use these models today. So we rely on the models by Anthropic. We rely on the models of OpenAI. We'll be very excited to integrate Mistral. I don't know if Arthur's already in the room or not, as soon as they're available. To us, it's not necessarily where the core differentiation of dust is going to come from today. It's really about the orchestration and the usability that, that we think we have a card to play. Yep. And just to show uh, like uh, different type of uh, agents, are you planning to make them uh, collaborate in a certain way? Yeah, this was one of the really exciting ways in which we started seeing conversations pop up. It was like, oh my God, you can have multiple assistants in the same conversation. And of course, there are you know, next steps that seem exciting and that we'll be excited to, to explore. Um, again, I think it goes back to a level of trust and emotional reaction to these machines taking over. And so it's not necessarily going to be about the performance in a white paper that could tell you that 97% of the time it's fine. It's like, how do I feel about the likelihood of me looking stupid if I just let them run from Friday afternoon to Monday morning? Uh, but, but we're really excited about the potential of chaining them, having them collaborate, having them challenge each other. All that kind of uh, jazz is, is very much top of mind. What's your business photo? Uh, it's very original, and it's a little secret, but I'm willing to just give it to you. Software as a service. Um, <laughs> we, we think there'll be different ways in which like, enterprise scale or large companies will want to get charged. Uh, again, inspiration from the payments company. Some companies know about interchange. Other companies don't know about interchange. And your business model has to adapt about where they find value in your product. We're fundamentally convinced that Bring, being able to bring a team and help them collaborate on their day-to-day -day tasks around these models is the value that we're providing. And so charging on a cost-plus basis for some of the parts of the product that we get access from, from third parties is totally fine for us. Um, we're quite early in our journey and working with design partners mostly right now, so it's a question that we're sort of mulling over and noodling on but haven't fully released our uh, stats and numbers on.